the cardinal points. This book could maybe help me. Each cardinal point is associated with one animal and one color. In the middle sits the impaled dragon, and out of respect, all the others are turned towards him. Turtle, the dragon, the crane, and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. I think I heard a bang. Could it be this cupboard? This is interesting. Ernest Logan, MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, M.D. Comsite Chester, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, Ernest Logan. Here's Miss Gray. Sorry to keep you waiting. Lady Clark's condition requires regular care. I believe you want to ask me a few questions. Indeed, mademoiselle. This porcelain is remarkable. Is it old? It's about three centuries old, I believe. Wait, let me find the reference.
she appears to be very flustered. Just a minute, please, Mr. Poirot. Just a minute, please, Mr. Poirot. She's unable to hide her emotion, and her makeup has been disturbed. I think that this young woman has just been kissed. Here? Teapot with Black Dragon, Gangshi period, end of the 17th century. It is a rare piece with unusual colors. You have a good knowledge of art history. Acquired while working with Sir Carmichael. I used to help him manage his collection and choose his new acquisitions. Did you have a good relationship with your employer? He treated me well, and I am sorry for his death. Have you seen any strangers hanging around in the past few days? No. Nobody has been near Comside. Tell me what happened last night. After dinner? Well, I did some sewing, and then I went to bed. I was woken by the telephone at 11. I heard Franklin Clark speaking with the gardener. They left with some lanterns and they found the body. What are your feelings about Franklin Clark? What an odd question. Of course I think he's a good man. He's energetic, nice, very sociable. Miss Gray, if I may be so bold, please do not take offence. My friend has rather unusual methods, but all he wants is to find the murderer. Yes, I understand. I must rest. Please excuse me. Earlier, you asked me to watch the living room door for you. I don't wish to be indiscreet, but sometimes a gentleman stumbles upon a secret without intending to. That is sometimes the case. And I saw Franklin Clark kissing Miss Gray at the foot of the stairs. Do you think this is a common occurrence? No, I saw emotion, intensity. I think it was their first kiss. Well done, mon ami. Well spotted. However, I don't think I completely understand this business. Why did Sir Carmichael not defend himself? He appeared to have been active and strong. The murderer did not give him a chance. Let us try and reconstruct the scene. Sir Clark is taking his customary walk. Our killer is hiding behind a bush. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. The killer leaves his hiding place on the right-hand side. He approaches silently over the grass. Then he throws himself on his prey and cuts the poor man's throat. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. 
everything appears to match the crime scene, Monsieur Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Oh, just a minute. I'm getting dressed. Mr. Kirst, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes. Indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer. Imagine that. Mr. Cust, are you all right? You don't seem well. My apologies. My throat is burning and my head feels heavy. It's ever since the war, you know. Since my injury, my head has never been the same. Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me, Hastings. Intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ah, is Thora Grey coming? Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Franklin Clark. Poirot, our guests will be here soon. We must prepare ourselves. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. I hope to concentrate on my guests. Franklin Clark always seems at ease, regardless of what he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. The song says, Sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. Sometimes I love a brunette. Sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song says. Donald is always on edge. Leave me alone. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he is trying hard to control himself.
She appears to have taken more care with her appearance than the last time. She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for him? <laughs> 